Hey guys, how's it going? Lunar Complex here, and today, as you could tell by the title of the video, I have created a Legend of Zelda wallet limit. So the amount of gold, coins, rubies that you can have in your inventory and set a max to that and all of that sort of fun stuff. So if we go ahead and play this demo here, play a new game, we have not set anything yet, but if we click this orb here, max gold change to 99, we have a green icon here. If we go to items, key items, we have a small pouch in our inventory, increases the amount of gold you can carry to 99. So now if I go ahead and collect some gold, 25, we see that there, 25, 50, all right, collect them more, 75. If we go to our max amount of gold, we do not actually have 100, we have 99. And if you save this, end the game, go to continue, load the game you just had, we still have 99 and it cannot be changed. We are stuck with the max. Now if we go ahead and upgrade our wallet, say we get a medium sized wallet, so max gold changed to 14.9. We go to item, key item, see we have a medium pouch, increases the amount of gold you can carry to 149. We still have 99, so we have not gained what we have thought we've gained before. So if we go to any gold chest, we have 25 gold. All right, we're up to 124, 149, and that should be the maximum amount, and it is. Now if we upgrade our wallet again to the highest tier, so max gold change to 199, we have a limit of, let's find out, key items, blah, blah, large. Increase the amount of gold you can carry to 199. So if we go ahead and collect some more gold, we're up to 174, 199 and we're stuck there yep and for kind of a fun sort of thing if you want you can even decrease the amount of gold back to a smaller wallet you would just have to kind of use the same mechanic here you would just repeat what this guy does by removing this wallet and so i will be completely recreating this uh it's pretty simple uh this wallet mechanic but i do want to show off what i will be also adding to the end of this video if you're interested and that's a display for this wallet uh, i worked all day on this and i am just i kept getting more and more th ideas of what i wanted it to do and so if we go to our wallet limit with graphics animation version 2 we have something amazing to show and that is a nikon right there so we have a zero all right if i go to the highest tier wallet here so maximum gold change to whatever we also notice that the image changes down here as well. We can now hold up to, I didn't actually add the items to this because I just wanted to work on the display here, but we can hold the maximum amount of gold. And if we go ahead and click this chest, we have four. And as you can see, it kind of went up to four. If we collect 25 gold, we have 29. It displays exactly what we have on our character. If we click the next chest, we see it increased to 54. All right, that's fine and dandy. What if we amp it up a bit? What if we collect thousands of gold? All right, that was cool. It moved up. What if we collect even more gold? It's moving up even more. It's going to 14,699. And if we collect 100,000 gold, even though it says 25, this should increase to 137,822, which it does in a nice timely manner, mind you. Uh, before the previous iteration of this did it one by one every frame and it took forever to get to say you know a million gold but this actually gets there pretty quickly and like i said before if you wanted to for some reason click uh change your gold back down collect some gold it would actually start decreasing back down to 99 gold which could take a little while but there's ways to speed it up but we should be approaching 99 gold and we can't get any more than that Yep, it's stuck at 99 unless we get a bigger pouch. So stay tuned for the end of the video after I explain how to actually have a pouch or a gold or wallet limit. I will explain how I got that working. So what you're going to do is create a new file. So open up RPG Maker, type in uh, whatever you want for here. I'm just going to go ahead and choose my desktop for this. Click OK. And we have our brand new game here. And what we're going to do first is actually go to a website, and that website is yenfly.moe. And in here, what we're going to do is scroll down to whenever you see green, that's usually how I do this. Download all available plugins, click here. Download this plugin, go ahead, and it will download into an archive. And what you would do is go to Game, Open Folder, go to JS, Plugins. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Drop that right in here. And the only file, the only plugin you will actually need 
is going to be Anfly's core engine because um, that's really the only one I used for this. After you added that into your game, what I usually typically do is go to plugins, delete the made with MV, go ahead, double click, add in the Yanfly core engine, go ahead and change the screen width and height. This is typically what I do. You do not have to do this. However, I like to do this because I like my normal 912 by 528 and scroll down to the max gold here. Now, before changing that, actually, you're going to want to double click anywhere, double click in here and go ahead and control variables. What you're going to have to do is add a max gold variable and a uh, gold icon variable. If you click OK, just go ahead and delete this. You can view to make sure you still have these variables. You do. All right. Great. And what we're going to do is go to the plugins, double click on Yanfly's core engine, scroll down to the gold. What we're going to do is change max gold to dollar sign game variables dot value and whatever we assign that max gold value to. So variable one. All right. And now for this, you don't really have to do anything. You could just put it at zero because for some reason, Yanfly made this a number variable type and not a string like this. So for those reasons, and also you may want to add a semicolon, not sure if it works without. It probably does because of a lot of safety syntax precautions JavaScript uses. Just put a zero there, it really doesn't matter. What we're actually going to have to do though is go into the Yanfly's plugin file itself. So game, open folder, JS plugins. Go ahead and open this in any sort of coding text editor you have. I have Sublime. What we're going to do is go down to line. 1970 and in this line what you should see is this guy here except for the obviously lunar complex was here you will have the inflight.icon.gold here which you will just go ahead and change to dollar sign game variables dot value two or whatever you want that gold icon picture to change whichever variable you want to use for it so i'm using two you use whatever it is and if you go down 10 more lines to 1980 you're going to do the same sort of thing, changing yanfly.icon.gold to the variable you're going to use to display your gold icon picture on your menu. And that should be all you have to do for the plugin. And like I said before, the only reason we have to actually hard code these in here, which make a note that you do this because every time Yanfly has an update and you download all the plugins, save them over, it's not going to save this, I believe. So just keep a note and again the reason why you have to hard code it in here is because of this being a number I believe it's because of this being a number because this being a string is fine if I go to plugins and change this to a variable and not this because it's a number I guess the next thing you're going to want to do is go to database go ahead and go to system what I usually do is delete those for testing so just have Harold as the starting actor go to items let's add in some items so in eight, we're gonna add in a small pouch. It's gonna be, I like the whole tier system colors of green, red, blue, yellow, like in all of the Legend of Zelda games, Pokemon. It's just, it seems like that is the tier colors that kind of go together if there are four colors or three if you just, if you don't include yellow. But anyway, so small pouch will be the green one, I guess. And if we type in a description here, so it increases the amount of gold you can carry to 99. This is going to be a key item. Scope is none. Occasion never. Consumable, no. I don't think you'd want to consume it. And price, I mean, if you want to be able to have the player buy it, you change the price. And go ahead and copy this over here with Control C, Control V here and here. Change small to medium. Change the icon. What I'm going to change it to is red. Change the size to 149. And this actually doesn't change anything. This is just to show kind of cosmetically what the player has on them to um, kind of give them more information of their inventory or their gold carrying amount. Go to the next one, type in large or whatever size kind of system you want. Blue, and this is gonna be 199 max. Go ahead and click okay, and that should be it for that. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is just right click, quick event creation, treasure. Go ahead and type in, I mean 25, just if you wanted to test it. Paste a lot of these are character so that you're able to test out all of the gold possibilities your character. Can. All right, and now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is double click, go ahead and since this is going to be the first pouch, if you go to other one, the green thing here, in options, disc click walking, click stepping and direction fixed, leave priority as same as characters, leave trigger as action button, 
double click in here what we're going to do is change some variables the first one being max gold change it to whatever is corresponding to the small pouch so 99 and copy paste it and we're going to change this one to the gold icon which is if we remember i believe was 311 is the green one what you're going to do is change your player's items or your party's items to the small pouch increase one add in some show text window here saying your max gold has been increased to 99 and then just go ahead and erase this event. Now keep in mind this event will come back if the player re-enters. So I guess instead of erasing, you could set control self switch to A, new event page, self switch A, and just leave it like that so it locks up, kind of. All right, if you hit OK, uh, just copy this and paste it two more times. The second one here is going to be red. The max gold is going to be changed to whatever you set it to before to make sure it all lines up and matches. Red, I believe, was 309. What we're going to do is add in the medium pouch, but we're also going to get rid of the first pouch we got. So change item, small pouch, decrease one, and then we give them the medium pouch. Give them a little notice like, hey, your max gold has been increased to 149. Self switch A so that it just stays here. When it's done, it's done. You can never get back to this again. And then go ahead and do the same for blue. I believe blue is 312. Give them the large pouch, but make sure you take away the medium pouch decrease. Tell them that their gold has been increased to 199. And that should be that should be really it. If we go ahead and save and run this. God, that scared me. I keep forgetting about the music. They should really set that to zero. Alright, new game. Right now we have no gold. If we go ahead and click the green one, your maximum gold has been increased to 99. We see the icon there has changed. If we go to items, key items, we see here increase the amount of gold you can carry to 99. All right, let's uh, click some chests around here. All right, we're up to 75. If we click again, we are maxed out at 99. So if we go ahead and save, just to kind of test every scenario, re-enter the game, we're still at 99, and we cannot go past it until we click the medium pouch which extends our max gold to 149 if we go ahead and click here 25 gold 25 gold we should not be able to pass 149 awesome and the icon did change to red blue will increase to 199 icon change key item some information and if we click some gold we see that it does not go above 199 and that's it that's really all you need to do in order to kind of have the wallet size change and the wallet size mechanic added to your video game. And if you just needed that, you can go ahead and stop watching this video. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. It's a pretty neat mechanic. Um, it's one that I can see myself applying uh, to some of my video games because it's just an added thing that makes it more realistic, I guess. And just it kind of caps the player from being able to save up a whole bunch at first and then just maybe be able to access a store to buy an ultimate weapon or a whole bunch of potions, you know, stuff like that. It really limits the player and kind of gives them more of a... Well, I guess less of a cheap mechanic to just grind for money and then buy all the potions they need and stuff like that. Even though I guess they could buy potions, grind for more money, buy more potions and just do it that way. But this makes it take up a little bit more time and effort at least. All right. Now, if you are staying to watch how I did the animation thing, what you will need to know is I've added a couple more variables, specifically a display amount variable. And I'm using variables 5 through 11 for the 1's place, 10's place, 100's place, up to a million's place. And in the picture indexes, I've used picture index 5 for the 1's place picture and up to the same format as the variables I just showed you. So that picture index 11 is the 1 millionth decimal place picture. So if I have 1 million gold, um, picture 11 will show 1 in a specific location on the screen and also i have added this yellow orb uh, wallet thing here that expands my player's wallet size to the maximum you're allowed and change its icon did not add it an item because that's just cosmetic and i'm just working on the animation for this part and of course some chests here that i've increased the gold amount but it shows 25 even though i'm giving the player 123,000. likewise with this one it's just a million just to kind of show examples of what that is and so what you're gonna have to do on the main screen is create an event here that runs parallel and has a self switch a on to a blank page here so it stops running 
and go ahead and switch a main switch on. And if we go to a database, we have here in our common events, a one common event, you only need one, called main, triggers parallel, switches activated by main one turning on. And we have a lot of stuff in here. I'll go over this in sequential order, however, I'm gonna skip this first one and talk about it later. What I have here is a script of, and I'll paste this in a text editor to make it easier to see. I have this right here. So what we're gonna do is assign values to game variables. Uh, so to game variable five, which if you remember was this one right here. So game variable five. So the ones place variable, that's the name of it. What we're gonna do is set it to some sort of thing. We're gonna set it to game variables three, whatever's in three, but we're also going to mod it by 10. And then we're going to take the floor of it or the whole number. We're going to forget what's what past the decimal. So if it's like 13.33333, we're just going to take the three in the ones place of the 13 and drop all the rest of the decimal part. And it'll just be three. What we're going to do is put that into the ones place variable. Next in the six variable, we're going to do the same sort of thing, except we're going to divide by 10 the value that's in variable three, then mod it again by 10, which will give us the tens place number and put that into the what we had here, which was variable six, the tens place variable. So if we had our example 13.333, what it's going to do is it's going to divide it by 10, mod it by 10, which basically just gets that one from the tens place, drops any decimals or anything and puts that into the variable six, which is the tens place variable. And you're going to do that with uh, each new number, you're going to add on another zero. And so if we had a number like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this one here will actually go into this variable here because it's 1,234,576. While the seventh place or the seven number will go into the fifth variable because it is the ones place and the fourth is the thousands place and that will go here into the eighth variable or the thousands place variable. All right, so that's what you're gonna basically have to do for this. And if we scroll down to this whole series of if else, if display amount, our variable three is less than 10 and also create an else branch. So basically if the display amount is anywhere from zero to nine, we're gonna show a picture. And this picture here is going to be, since it's the ones place, because if we have between zero and nine, we're gonna only use one number. We don't have a double digit or triple digit or anywhere beyond that. What we're gonna do is in picture index five, we need a name of the file type. And that file type is designated by the number which in the ones place of our example number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say it's seven, we'll grab what's in value five, which is seven, we'll turn it into a string because uh, what that will do is make the seven turn into that, which allows us to go into game, open folder, images, pictures, search these pictures for anything named seven. Oh, we found it. It's gonna take this picture seven and from the upper left hand corner of that picture place the picture at 882 and 498y x scale y scale is 100 opacity is full at 255 and blend type is zero we're going to place that at basically the bottom right hand corner of the screen and that's it and if you're wondering about these pictures all i had to do was go to cooltext.com search batman I'm sure if you watch my videos, you know about this. I go to Keen, type in, I don't know, seven, for example. Set the text size to 25. This is just for my example. Go to logo, use gradient. Gradient is frost green 03. Image centered. Go ahead and change these. They should really take them off auto. And 30 by 30. And just drag and drop that to your image folder. Relabel it seven. And this allows us to dynamically acquire an image based off of its name when it changes. So if we had eight here, this would turn into the string of eight. Go into our images folder and select eight and put it in the lower right hand corner of our screen, which will be the ones decimal place number. So if we had 18, it'd put eight there. All right, and along with this, we have pictures index six through 13. 12 and 13 are, your, are gonna be your commas. So we have uh, six being our tens place, seven being hundreds, all the way to 11. Picture lot is gonna be for the millions place number. 
while 12 is going to be your comma for the in between your thousandths and your hundredth place, while 13 is going to be your comma in between your one millionths and hundred thousandths place. And so if we only have zero to nine gold, anywhere a single digit number gold, we're, we're only going to have to show a number. Go ahead and erase all these other pictures in case they're there. And now in the else, what we're going to do is if display mount is less than 100, so if it has two digit if it's a two digit number anywhere between 0 and 99 we're going to do the same exact thing we did before so for picture index 5 do the same exact thing here but for 6 what we're going to do is a little different make sure you change that 5 to a 6 the 5 to a 6 here and then offset its x position uh, i subtract 30 from it because each picture i have is a the width of each picture is 30 so this is going to show up to the left of my ones place picture which is where your tens place number should be and you're going to delete or erase pictures 7 through 13 because we're showing the sixth one you do not want to erase the sixth one that wouldn't make much sense and you're basically going to copy the same format for each one of these but just adding instead of erasing the next picture you're going to add it in and offset it by 30 or whatever it is you have. Make sure you change the value and the picture index and don't delete the one you just added. Now, what happens when you get to a number that is four digits long? You're just gonna add in the comma to where you believe is good, like a good location. I use 811 by 506 and I just trial and error to place it correctly. And you can actually put in the literal comma there because that doesn't change, it's static. And so that will go into the images folder and pick the image named with the comma and that's going to be in your 12th picture slot so don't erase it after you have a number that's four digits long next you're going to get to a number in the millions and you're just going to add the other comma in the 13th picture slot and then just offset it by the correct amount to make it look nice now what i want to go over with is the iteration amount so if i go into this first script i said i skipped it before and go ahead and look at it so what i have here is basically an if statement that runs based on if the current gold you have now is not equal to the current display gold so let's say you pick up five gold five gold is not equal to zero gold so we're going to go ahead and dive into this now if five gold is greater than zero gold so if you pick up if you gain gold we're going to go ahead and do this line if you lose gold we're going to go ahead and do this line the best way i can explain this is basically in a nutshell we have our display gold in value three so we're going to set value of a variable that variable is three we're going to set it to itself this kind of means we're adding this to it every time what this is here is let's say we want to acquire 100 gold and that takes a certain amount of time now what if we required a million gold well that that should take longer but it's not going to take 10,000 times longer because 10,000 times 100 is a million that would be ridiculous. What it's gonna have to do is dynamically change exponentially, which is why I have here. So if we need to, if we acquire gold, we're gonna keep adding to the display value. What we're gonna keep adding is the difference in gold we have versus the gold that's displayed already on the screen. So if we require 250, we're gonna subtract that with zero if we had zero gold to begin with. And so what that will give us is 250. Then we're gonna turn it into a string and take the length of it. So 250, turn it into a string. The length of it in characters is three. Then we're gonna to have to apply an offset of minus one. So now we have two, and we're going to have that be the exponent of a number here we want. So I have five. Five to the power of two is 25. So this turns into 25, add it onto that zero. That's what the variable, that's what the display value becomes, 25. Now, eventually we'll get closer and closer to the amount we required, which was 250. When the difference between 250 and the number that is the variable three, the display value becomes a two digit number. We're basically going to subtract that two by one, giving us one, which will then add on only five every time instead of 25. And that's how I dynamically change the rate at which the iteration gets closer and closer to the number of gold we actually have based on how much gold we acquired and lost. So if we, for example, gained a million gold, the number of digits in a million is seven. So we would apply this here and it would give us seven minus one, which is six. We would then add to our zero five to the sixth power. So it would get us to a million pretty quickly rather than just adding one to it a million times. And so eventually the difference between a million and the display value here will not be a seven digit number. Matter of fact, as soon as we apply a million here, 
it will be a five digit number right after because the difference between a million and one is going to be a six digit number 999999 so this will increase a little slower but it's getting there eventually much quicker than if it was a linear rate of change and that's basically what we're doing here we just subtract that amount if we want to go down say if you spent money on something an expensive piece of armor that cost a million gold and that's basically it i hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching